Hi, this is Chong Kim and welcome to Vim Tips. Today we're going to talk about how to maneuver around your files. So the first topic is folding. So let me open up a file. Let me split this and bring up file. Okay. So here we have a file and to to enable folding it's convenient to first set the the folding column which is short the short one the short form is FDC for fold column. So set FDC equal to 4 and that creates a gutter of four characters over here. Right now it's all blank, but we can create a fold by specifying a region. Right now, if I do set FDM, which is the uh, fold method, uh, by default it's manual. So if I want to take this init code and fold it, I could do it by doing uh, Shift V, specifying the region, and doing, let's include the end and I do a Z F and that creates a fold and you can see over here that there's a plus sign if I do Z A that toggles back and forth to open and close you, you can do it individually by doing um, you can do it separately by doing Z C to, to close and Z O to open but if you just want to know one command just do Z A and within a fold you can create another another fold. So, for example, this else clause, I can do um, zf on this, and th that'll fold that. Za, and you can see that this shows that there is a fold inside. Okay, so there's a fold inside of fold. If I want to disable it, disable folding. I could say set FEN for fold enable, actually no FEN, and that'll turn off the fold. But sometimes it's convenient if it does the folding automatically, so that's where FDM comes in, that's the fold method. And remember, the default was manual. But if I specify it as indent, then, oh, I have to set fold enable because I had disabled it before. So you could see here that uh, all these folds are created depending on the indent level. And you can use Z, I did Z capital M and that did more folding. You could think of M as more and R uh, as reduce the, the amount of folding. So Z capital R will reduce it Z capital M will uh, will make those folds. Uh, that's to fold everything. So if you wanted to individually uh, do more or less, you could do lowercase m or lowercase uh, r. So I did Z R and Z R, and I'm reducing the amount of fold in here. Okay. ZM. Okay. So if I want to do individual, remember you can do ZA to toggle. Okay, and that'll do it for the individual ones, and the others are are left. So ZM, ZR, those are for the fold levels. So that's folding. So let me get rid of the folding. Um, no set. No FEN. Okay, so and let me get rid of the uh, set FDC to back to zero, and so now I don't have folding. Okay, so next thing is GF. GF is uh, fairly useful, and the way that that works is if you're on a uh, like an imported file. In this case, I'm requiring a piece. You could type GF, but in this case, it returned me an error. It says uh, can't find file. The reason why is because it's not in your path. So if I 
uh, the path is an option. So if you say set path, it'll show you the the value that that it has right now. And this is the the path that it has, and it doesn't include the lib. So and and, and the piece is living in the lib directory. So for example, if I go into the lib, oops, um, uh, let me cd into my uh, where the code is living, the project root. Okay, and it's living in my lib directory. So if I go lib piece, that's where it is. So I want to include lib in my path. So I have to say set path plus equal. This will add to the file. I mean, add to the path. So I'm going to add uh, lib. And now if I do gf, that brings up the file. So you, you can keep on adding more directory paths as, as you need them, and it'll go and find it. So that was gf. Now, sometimes you still want to have the original file here, uh, so you can compare and look at it for reference. So instead, you can use command. Uh, sorry, um, Control W, Control F. So if I if I'm on on this file right now, and type Control W, Control F, that brings up the file in a separate window, but it still has the old file uh, still around so you can take a look at it. So that was control, uh, control W, control F. Remember control W is all the window commands. Okay. GD. So GD, let me bring this, let me close up the, close that, okay. So if I, if I, I'm over here, I'm looking at dim, and I wonder where is this, where do I declare this? If I do gd, that tells me that it was declared over here. Since Ruby isn't a language that really has uh, a declaration, you pretty much use it. It's, it's not very useful because it'll find the first occurrence, but where it is useful is if it's in a language that includes uh, a declaration. So let me bring up a C file. Oh, CD. And let me see, position. Okay, so here I have a file. I have two variables here, one is a global and the other one is an argument that's passed in. So here I, I say board. And pretend that this is a very long file. And if I do GD, that brings me to where the, the local uh, declaration of, of, of the board. All right. All right. Now, markers. Markers are like bookmarks. So let me go back to my previous file. And let's say, for example, I'm working on initialize, and I want to, and I'm going from uh, this part of the code, but I'm working on some other part, let's say, all the way at the end over here. And I want to move back and forth between them. So if I, if I do um, tick, tick, that will bring me back and forth between the old position and the new position. So what I need to do is uh, find out what that other position is. This is line 134. Okay, keep that in mind. And this is line 10. So I go to uh, 134 capital G. That brings me here. So now if I do um, tick tick, which is the, uh, uh, the apostrophe, that brings me here and I could do stuff and then I can go back with uh, tick tick and it'll bring me back here. So I could be writing code and I want to find uh, what was that in initialize? Tick tick brings me back to initialize. All right. And then tick tick. And then I'm back here uh, coding. So this is a very quick way for you to uh, go back and forth between uh, two, pl two pieces of code that are in the same file. Now, if you want to, new if you want to find uh, uh, this only goes back and forth between the last two, 
But if you want to name certain areas uh, and, and create these bookmarks, you can use the M command. So I could. So right now, uh, if I want to name this as A, you can. You have uh, 26 letters to choose from. So I do M A. This is not a colon. It's just M A, and that marks it as A. And let's say I go someplace else over here and mark this as B. I do M B. So now I have A and B. So if I go somewhere else, I want to go back to A, I say tick A, and that brings me back to A. Tick is the same as uh, apostrophe, just a little bit easier to say. And if I want to go to B, it's tick B. So you can go back and forth pretty easy. Tick A, tick B, tick A, tick B. And uh, tick, tick goes back to the previous one, tick, tick, back and forth. So. So you can um, so you can move back and forth between different areas of code pretty easily.